Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 56. And I will read from verse 1 to 13. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things? They asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there, except lay his hands on a few people who were ill and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. Verse 11. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed with oil many people who were ill and healed them. That is the word of the Lord. This year's theme for us is to grow and to go. And what we essentially are trusting God for is that God will establish us. And that after we are grown in God, that by his grace, we will not just sit with all the growth that we've received from him. But the Lord, by his grace, will allow us to go and make an impact out there. An impact in our families, an impact in our places of work, an impact in our businesses, wherever it is that the Lord has called us, that we will be the true salt and the true light. And as we look at Go in Faith, that great missionary, Robert Moffat. He was a missionary to South Africa and to be precise in Botswana area. He worked for years in Botswana land, South Africa, without seeing a single convert. When some friends in England wrote asking what they might send him as a present, he requested a Holy Communion set. Since there were no other believers there, they were surprised. But still, they complied with the wishes of the great missionary Robert Moffat. And when the set arrived, several months later, on the day that the set arrived, more than a dozen people had been won to Christ. And as those elements that set of Holy Communion arrived, they had the opportunity to be served their first Lord's Supper. Such is the beauty and indeed the courage of faith. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. In the words of that great preacher of the days of old, Charles Spurgeon, he says that faith has a saving connection with Jesus Christ. And he says that it's like we are in the deep seas, almost drowning, and Jesus is on the shores with a rope. And as we are drowning, Jesus holds this rope, and throws it to us, and then he keeps pulling, and as he's pulling, we hold on to that rope with a confidence that yes, we may not see Jesus Christ, but he's pulling, he's pulling until 
we are safe on the shores. And yet, if there are doubts, then we will be left drowning in the deep seas. Faith has two components. And one is belief. And belief sometimes can be a one-off. But the other component of faith is trust. And that trust is indeed continuous every single day of our lives. And as we look at this subject today, go in faith. We will look at three things. Number one, faith declared. Faith declared. And number two, faith demonstrated. Faith demonstrated. And then the third will be faith deployed. Faith deployed. Let's begin with faith declared. When we talk about a declaration, we talk about something that has been said or even something that has been taught, something that is being pronounced, something that is being proclaimed, something that someone is almost even eager to share it out. And this faith that we are talking about, as you will see in several uh, scriptures, as we look at the entire chapter number 6, you will see that Jesus Christ was teaching. Jesus Christ was declaring. Jesus Christ was proclaiming the word of God. For example, verse 1 and 2. Jesus left there and went to his home, accompanied by his disciples. And we are told that when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were amazed. He began to declare. He began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him as he was teaching, they were amazed. They said, but this is one of us. We can see his sisters. How is it that he's teaching with such power and with authority? But the bottom line is this, that Jesus Christ proclaimed. Jesus declared. And that's why we talk about faith declared. The next portion that talks about the sending of the disciples, look at verse 6. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Jesus went around declaring from village to village. Even before he called the disciples and he sent them. When you come to verse number 12, the Bible says, they went out after Jesus Christ had sent the, uh, the disciples. It says, they went out and preached that people should repent. So they also went out and declared, faith declared. And so they went out and preached that people should repent. When you come to verse number 14, it looks like John the Baptist also declared this faith. He continued to teach the truth to the point that he had to pay for it with his life. Verse number 14 says this. King Herod heard about this. About what? About what Jesus Christ was teaching. Jesus declared. When you come to verse number 18, it says, For Let's begin with verse 17. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. And John was not happy about it. John was telling the truth what needs to happen. And so John was speaking against that faith declared. The truth of God declared. The truth of God proclaimed. And because of that, Herod had to put John to death. In fact, we are told 
that because of that, Herodias had a grudge with John. And so when the opportunity presented itself, the opportunity presented itself because their daughter was having a birthday. And when, when Herod asked the daughter, what should we do for you on your birthday? The mother influenced her and she said, I want the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And that is why and that is how John the Baptist died because of standing and declaring the truth and the word of God. As a matter of fact, that is why some faiths I know do not celebrate birthdays. When you come to verse number 30, it says, Then the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and all they had taught. Because when they were sent, they were sent to declare. This faith, when we have it, we are supposed to declare it. This faith, when we have it, we are supposed to speak about it. This faith, when we have it, we are supposed to share it. This faith, when we have it, others are supposed to see it also in our lives. So that, yes, what we are saying is also consistent with our lives. Faith declared in life and also in words. That is when... This faith will make a difference in the life of God's people. Number one point there is faith declared. Go in faith. For how can they hear the gospel unless someone shares with them? And I pray that when we share, I pray that when we declare, we will also be living it out so that there is consistency with that which we declare and how we live our lives. Go in faith. Declare the faith that you have received. The second thing that I see is faith demonstrated. Faith demonstrated in that as Jesus was teaching his teaching was accompanied by results he is a son of God he taught with authority he taught with power and therefore that was seen in action so several verses when you go to verse again number one and two Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. And they said, where did this man get these things? They asked, what's this wisdom that, they, what's this wisdom that has been given him that even does miracles isn't this a carpenter and a carpenter's son so as he taught there was demonstration and in that particular verse that demonstration was seen in the miracles when you go to verse number 12 again there it says this, they went out, this is now after he had empowered the disciples, they went out and preached that people should repent and they drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. The demonstration of faith was seen in their midst. The demonstration of the power of God was seen in their midst. And so number one, faith declared. Number two, faith demonstrated. And again, John the Baptist demonstrates that faith that sometimes it's not just in the easy circumstances, but he demonstrates that once I've received this faith, I am willing to do anything and everything, including with all my own life. And that demonstration is that because he has seen the light, he was willing, and as a matter of fact, he was killed as we 
have shared. And so we see that when, in verse 16, but when Herod heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. Because some were saying the way Jesus Christ is teaching, it's like G G John the Baptist who has come back to life. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested and had him be bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias that demonstration. He was saying that no matter what that which I have received, I am not going to be tossed left, right and center by the authorities. I will demonstrate that I believe in God even if it means that my life will have to be cut short. When you see the feeding of the 5,000 if you go to verse number 39 following, because Jesus had preached and many people had followed him. At some point, the disciples were wondering, what are we going to do with this man? Time had come for them to have a meal, but there was no lunch. And, and, and they were saying, let's go away. But Jesus directs them and tells them, please sit right here. And then he asks, what is it that you have that can be eaten? And then when you come to verse 39, it says, Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves, then gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of the men who had eaten was 5,000. The demonstration. demonstration. That which Jesus was teaching, he taught with authority. And that authority was also seen in action. You know, as you go along again, you see that demonstration of faith in Jesus being able to walk on water. If you go to verse 45, we are told that immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. And we are told that uh, later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake. And he was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly, he started to follow them. And as he was following them, he was walking on water. To the surprise of even the disciples, who some of them were saying, Oh, this is a ghost. And Jesus Christ says, no, it is I. Again, you see the demonstration of this faith. Now, when you come to verse 53, again it says this. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout that whole region and carried the sick on mat to wherever they, they heard he was. And whatever, wherever he went, into villages, towns or countrysides, they placed their sick on the marketplaces and they begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak. And all who touched his cloth were healed. Go in faith. Faith declared. Go in faith. Faith demonstrated. This week has been an interesting week for me. And it's an interesting week because there are times that in a service like this, we pray with you, we pray with people, 
And sometimes it's even as the service is ending. So just make a short prayer. This is your prayer request. May the Lord go ahead of you. May the Lord come through for you. And so why I say this week has been interesting is because, uh, uh, in fact, one of these called me when I was away and, 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 and he had come uh, because of an issue that he had. And he said uh, it, it, it also was relating to a court, a court case. And that day I was away and the, 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 the case was here at Milimani. So he called me and he said, I have been acquitted. I have been acquitted. We pray together. Are you in the office? I want to come and just give thanks. And I told him I was away. So can we arrange for another time? Nevertheless, he still came, talked with one of the pastors here. But a plan that after we've come back, we'll still be able to. And so this week, I was in one of those huge offices in the city. Just giving thanks. Why? Faith demonstrated. The other one was, and, and, and uh, if the senior pastor, this is a time of confession. Uh, and, and Pastor Sami was in that meeting. We were having a meeting, and, and it was a Zoom meeting. And, and I was in the office here. The meeting was online. And I get a call from our front office desk that someone really wants to see you. Perhaps that person is here. <laughs> that someone really wants to see you. I said, but I'm in a meeting. Uh, I will not be able to. Can we arrange for another time? And they really insist. And when they came, guess what? They say, I just want a short prayer of thank you to God. Because we prayed and they were even in ICU. So they were not even here. And we pray. the way we normally pray here was in ICU for about three weeks. Okay? Got out. And so I had to make a very quick prayer in the middle of the meeting. They may not have realized. In the middle of the meeting. And say that we will be able to follow up. Faith demonstrated. And this is the faith that the Lord wants us to go in. Now, worship team, please join me. I know I still have another point coming. I know I still have another point coming. But I want us to be practical. I want us to be practical. I have seen this faith demonstrated as we have prayed with people. And maybe you are also here, you've seen this faith demonstrated in your life. And I want us to trust this God, even as we'll come and conclude with the, with the other point. And so if you're in this sanctuary today, and you want to see this faith demonstrated in your life, It can be in whatever way. I'll ask you to come. Amefanya mambo ambayo Mwanadamu hawezi kufanya Anatoa faraja ambayo Mwanadamu If you are here today oh, Please come it could be a healing situation. It could be a provision situation. Whatever it is, just come.
unless you're also coming for that demonstration of faith but if you're not please I want you to come and we have some anointing oil I wish uh, I didn't expect that will be this many so maybe we need to get many more pastors please come sanctuary father we pray that there will be a demonstration in our lives but the last point and if you don't mind sit for a minute is faith deployed and when you talk about this deployment it's the act of moving something or someone into a strategic position or a position of readiness or the condition of being in such a position. It basically means to be released, to be sent, to be sent with authority. And the best text that demonstrates that is from verse 6. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village, Calling the twelve to him, he sent them out two by two and gave them the authority over evil spirits. And you can see that when they were sent in verse 12, they went out and they preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Why? Because after this faith was declared, and remember the disciples were with Jesus, after this faith was demonstrated, then they were deployed. They were sent. And that is where we are this year. That after we have grown, we have seen, we have learned, God will want to send you. For here it says, two by two but God may want you to be the salt and the light of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wherever you are there should be a difference in a place of work there should be a difference in your business there should be a difference in our families why because we know Jesus Christ so we do differently our businesses 
We practice family differently because there is a faith that has been declared, because there is a faith that has been demonstrated, because we have known him, and so we live by his standard. You have been sent. Otherwise, if we are to stay behind with everything that we have learned, not just this year, but over the years, please forgive my terminology, but we risk being spiritually obese. And that does not bring glory to God. The Lord wants to reach this nation. The Lord wants to reach our families. The Lord wants us to transform the nations. The Lord wants us to make a difference in the places where we are in. And that is why after he had been with the disciples, he sent them out. And when he sent them out, he sent them with authority he sent them with the power, the authority that they had seen, the power that they had seen. And therefore, faith demonstrated. Faith declared. We can go in that faith because we've been sent by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village, calling the twelve to him. He began to send them out two by two and gave them the authority over the impure spirits and all sorts of forces of darkness. God wants you to demonstrate his power even in the dark forces of the world today. They went out and they preached. And you can see because they were sent with the authority of the Lord, they were able to do that which Jesus was doing because they went in faith. Faith declared. Faith demonstrated. And then faith deployed. Someone says that faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. So as the worship team just leads us through a short reflection, because we have prayed, by faith we see the hand of God. The light of creation's grand design. The lives of those who prove his faithfulness. Who walk by faith and not by sight. <laughs>